Let's give Andrea a round of applause and uh, let's move on. It is really great to be here. We had an amazing time, didn't we, last night, Dot? Didn't we have an amazing time? It was great, wasn't it? Awesome. Such awesome food. It was just, oh. And then we have pavlova. Oh, my goodness. So anyway, I digress. But uh, so uh, Alan asked me to introduce myself. I am uh, the director of the Southwest of England for Assemblies of God Churches. And we lead a church, uh, two churches, one in North Devon in Barnstable and another church in Tiverton. And uh, this is quite literally the land of my forefathers because my dad was born and raised in Cornwall. Yes, I know. He was born and raised in Bowder Farm in Week St. Mary. And we were chatting the other day and uh, I, he was talking about school and where he went to school. And uh, he said to me, I didn't actually go to school until I was seven. He said, because the farm is so out in the sticks and Week St. Mary that mum and dad, can, they had to sort of make sure that uh, they were secure enough that I could get on a bike and cycle all the way to Titson to get the bus for school. And so he actually started school when he was seven. And, uh, but he's 81 now. And he's still fixing combine harvesters. He's still going out to farms and helping with machinery. And uh, so, bless dad indeed. Because it is Father's Day today. Whether we are a dad in the natural or not, uh, we bless you and we thank you and uh, for all that you do for other people that you come across and other young people that are in your life. So... I wanted to bring you a message today, and uh, it's about hearing God for a new era. Grand title. But actually, if we boil it down, there's a lot of things where every day in our lives, people have so many questions, don't they? Like, not just one question, but multiple questions on multiple issues, yeah? People have loads of questions on multiple issues and are also almost expecting multiple answers, yeah? And so how do we as people of God equip ourselves and position ourselves to be a voice that will encourage people and bring new life into their situations. And I want to say to you, whether you are eight or whether you are 80, you are perfectly positioned, I was reminding the ladies last night, greatly prepared and wonderfully anointed. Turn around to your neighbour and say, you are perfectly positioned, greatly prepared and wonderfully anointed for this very occasion. Didn't that make you feel like, oh, yes, I am. It wanted to make you put your shoulders back and stick your chest out a bit and say, yes, actually, I am perfectly positioned, I am greatly anointed, and I am wonderfully prepared for whatever the day throws at me. And I want to tell you, Clay's Community Church, it is time to put on a bigger jacket, isn't it? It's time to embrace that bigger jacket that God is calling us to, to walk in and also to be a, vo a more prominent voice in our society in a more prominent place in this community. Amen? It's time for us to walk with confidence and with a stride in all that God has given us. Amen? So, I want to ask you today, Clay's Community Church, are you ready to go to the next level? Are you ready to go to the next level? Oh, but I don't have what it takes. Oh, but I don't have the resources. Oh, but I'm absolutely shattered after last night, says is it Chris? 
and I had to go in the toilet and pull out all those. Yeah, anyway, we won't go there. But uh, so I want to ask you again, Clay's Community Church, in your workplace, in your home life, are you ready to go to the next level? Wonderful. Whoa! Preach it, brother. Preach it, brother. So we need to have alignment. We need to know our assignment. And we need to execute it rightly or bring it forth well. To be people of God in our community, in the workplace, in our home life, in our family life, we need to have alignment with God We need to know what our assignment is. Not everything will be our assignment. Not everything we need to put our hand to build. And we need to bring it forth rightly. Amen? So to do that, we're going to look at the book of Samuel and the life of Samuel the prophet. So if you haven't read the book of Samuel 1 before, it begins at a place called Shiloh. And Shiloh was the religious and military capital of Israel. It was here where people came to worship at the tabernacle, the holy tent where God met his people in worship. And inside the tabernacle was the Ark of the Covenant where the sacred Ten Commandments were kept. Now the spiritual condition of Israel during this era was so bad. It was so bad that the priest's sons would steal the holy sacrifices and they would lay, you know, that kind of lay, with women who served in the tabernacle. So if you, were, if you were like doing a film script at this point, you'd be like, oh my goodness, this is dire. Like, we've got to set the scene. This place is called Shiloh. And there's just, there's just bad stuff going on. It is not good, okay? But don't worry, folks, because here arrives, and you can see like this guy called Elkanah. It's okay because the film gets better, because this guy called Elkanah, he's right with God. So the whole place might be falling apart, but Elkanah's right with God. And he comes and he brings these sacrifices to God and he comes to worship God and he brings his two wives and he's right with God. It's okay, people. There's a good line to the story. But Hannah can't have children. One of his wives can't have children. And so when she was at the tabernacle, she was praying to God and she said, God, if you will give me a son, I will give him to the Lord for your purposes. And so the Lord granted her with a son. And when it came to the time that he could be weaned, she gave her son up. She gave her son up for the purposes of God. She gave her son to the tabernacle to Eli the priest, to serve in the house of God. She only saw her son once a year. And every year, she would bring him a robe. Probably like two sizes too big for him. If you think about how much clothes you buy your children or you've bought other people or yourself, a year, it's a lot. Yeah? Yeah? So this jacket would need to be quite big if you are buying just one a year. And the great news is, is that because Hannah gave up her son for God's purposes, God blessed her with three more sons and two more daughters. Amen? So Liliana, can you just come down here whilst I'm speaking, please? So the passage, 1 Samuel 2, 18 to 19. But Samuel ministered before the Lord, a child girded with a linen ephod. Moreover, his mother made him a little road and brought it to him from year to year when she came up with her husband to offer the yearly sacrifice. So Samuel, his job was to just be before the Lord, to minister before the Lord. His role would be to 
lay in the tabernacle at night and make sure all the lamps were lit and all the lamps didn't go out, to serve the tabernacle, to clean the tabernacle, to spend time with God. And so he aligned himself with God's purposes. So though he was in a culture that seemed in huge spiritual decline, he didn't align himself with that. The priest's sons, they were like out partying and doing all this hedonistic stuff. And he was the younger son, the, or the younger lad in the, in the tabernacle in, uh, in Shiloh. But he didn't come under Eli's sons. He didn't come under any of their opinions, any of what they were doing. He was like, no, I'm the Lord's. I'm here to serve Eli. I want to say that to you now, that whether you are young or whether you are more mature, there is a great prize in just standing on God's word and standing on God's truth. And actually not putting ourselves in positions or places that we would feel compromised, amen? So we might be the only young person who stands out in the crowd, like my sons have been at times, but actually there is a great prize in not being part of the crowd, amen? So it must have been a very awkward moment for Samuel every year when his mother Hannah brought him an ephod that was too big for him because he had to grow into it. So Lillian is here. Can I just have that white jacket? Oh, actually, that jacket, that black jacket, that's a fantastic... Sorry, Lillian, are you all right with this? Awesome. Whose is this jacket? (laughs) Lovely. So, Lillian, would you uh, just be able to put this jacket on? How does it feel? A bit big, yeah. You're sort of having to pull things up and sort of, how, how is that for you? are sort of like, I can see what you're doing. You're sort of, yeah, you're sort of turning the cuff up and pulling it back a bit. And yeah, you're trying to make it fit, aren't you? But it doesn't quite fit. But she will grow into it. If it's anything like my 16-year-old... Oh my goodness, he has to like reach down to me and give me a hug now. It's like, it's embarrassing. And I want to tell you, whether you are Liliana's age or whether you are more mature, it's time to put on a bigger jacket. It's time to walk in the confidence that God has given you. And it's time to stand with your shoulders back and walk tall. And although it might feel a bit clunky and a bit like, I don't quite know how to walk in this because it's a new jacket and it feels a bit big. It is time for you to walk in it. It's time for you to walk in God's purposes to a greater level. Though it might feel a bit clunky, God is calling you to walk in it. And we need to thank God for where God has brought us to. Amen? Hasn't God brought us to a wonderful place in this church? The years of prayers, positioning, generosity, it's been wonderful. But now God is calling us to broaden our shoulders and extend our borders. Amen. I don't know what that means for you, whether that's a ministry or physically or what that is. You may now be seated. Okay. You've done an amazing job. Isaiah 54. 
Sing, O barren woman, you did not who did not bear. Break forth into sing and cry aloud. You who did not travail with child, for the spiritual children of the desolate one will be more than the children of the married wife, says the Lord. Enlarge the place of your tent and let the curtains of your habitations be stretched out. Spare not, lengthen your cords, strengthen your stakes, for you will spread abroad to the right hand and to the left, and your offspring will possess the nations and make the desolate cities inhabited. Great promise. But we need to remember that actually Israel is, is, was in exile. It was, it was a whole nation of people that were totally displaced, had no home at the time. They were living in makeshift tents. And God speaks to them and says, listen up, guys. I know that you've been, it's been an awful time for you. You've been in war, you've been in famine, you're twen- tent dwellers, you're not even in your home place, but I want you to start putting your stakes down deep into God and I want you to enlarge the place of your tent and stretch the, tent of, the place of your tent wide. And at that point, I'd be thinking, yeah, but there's this excuse, there's that excuse, there's... There's like, I've got the dog to think of. I've got a roast in the oven. And God says, no, by the Spirit of God, because we need his Holy Spirit, I'm speaking to you and I'm encouraging you that by the power of God, you, can, you are positioned perfectly for such a time as this to encourage your community to take up that new ministry or whatever that is or be the voice in your workplace or to start that new project in your workplace or to speak a new word of encouragement to someone that God puts on your heart or to stand out from the crowd in your school. I'm encouraging you to enlarge the place of your tent. Amen. Because you, God's people, are like the men of Issachar. They knew the times and the seasons. You carry the Spirit of God. We carry the Spirit of God. And God will put us around people to encourage them and bring a good word to them in times when they are struggling. Amen. And that's why things like Messy Church, Sunday School, Youth Group, Christians Against Poverty, that's why these things work so well, because our foundation is perfectly secure. We are built on the Word of God. Our foundation is solid. Our methods may change, but our message is always the same. That Jesus is good news. So alignment with God, spending time with God, being in God's presence, ministering to God, just doing the things that needed to be done, playing the keyboard, playing the guitar, making the quiche. There's power in that. To kids to stay planted, there's power in that. The second thing that Samuel had was that he knew his assignment, so he had alignment and he knew his assignment. One Samuel three nineteen, Samuel grew because he was aligned. He grew in God. It says God was with him and let none of his words fall to the ground. And all of Dan to Bathsheba knew that. Samuel was established to be a prophet of the Lord because he'd spent time with God. That's all. It's not overcomplicated. If it was, I wouldn't be doing it. He spent time with God and he grew in his relationship with God. And it says he grew in favour with God and man. Why? Because people could see that he'd been with God and he carried the wisdom of God but I want to tell you this right now Samuel's alignment came way before his assignment 
And it's the same of us. God's not going to spring you into some new venture or project if you haven't sought God on the process. Amen? If we haven't learned to understand what God's ways are. And what he's doing with God's people and over the last three years and particularly he is he has had us in a refining process. You know, we've had the sort of roaring 20s, haven't we? And the swinging 60s. And I believe that the 2020s are going to be remembered for those people that just shine Jesus. They're the Jesus people doing the Jesus thing in the Jesus way. Amen? That's what I want. I believe that we're going to be remembered for in this era. And we built it. We built these things on that Isaiah 61 and Micah 6 state mandate. The Lord is on me. Say it with me. The Lord is on me. He has anointed, say it with me, me, to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind the brokenhearted, to proclaim freedom for the captives and release from darkness for the prisoners to proclaim the year of the Lord's favour and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn and provide those who grieve in Zion, to bestow on them a crown of beauty instead of ashes, the oil of joy instead of mourning, a garment of praise instead of a spirit of despair. And we will be called what? Oaks of Righteousness a planting of the Lord for the display of his splendor. So our alignment comes before our assignment. And this church and your leadership are beautifully planted, perfectly positioned and greatly anointed. We had an amazing time yesterday because of that because of the foundation of prayer, because of the genuine connection, because people want to know love and truth. And so how do we deliver our assignment well? well we need to know what we need to have a hand to be involved in. Because right after this beautiful scripture in Samuel 3.19... <laughs> when it feels like everything is rosy and everything, everyone is listening to Samuel, the Israelites, I can't quite even say it, bring myself to say it, they steal the Ark of the Covenant out of the tabernacle. And they sort of try and use it as some sort of magic trinket box so the ark, the, uh, the, like the, the ark of the Covenant is like what the Ten Commandments are kept in. It's like what God downloaded to Moses. And they try and use it to win a fight, basically. But in that whole passage, I don't see the bit that says, Samuel legged it after them and said, what on earth are you doing? I don't see the bit that says, they sought the opinion of Samuel. Samuel, the one who had sat in the tabernacle night after night, kept the lamps burning, ensured that the Ark of the Covenant was guarded. All his young life he had done that, every night. Yet in that moment, the Israelites didn't want to know his opinion whatsoever. They went into the tabernacle, they took out the Ark of the Covenant, and they thought, I know how to win this fight. We'll just take, we'll take the Ark of the Covenant with us. 
and use it like a little magic trinket. See if we can win the war. Oh my goodness, how they had fallen. Totally didn't want to listen to God. But in that moment, church, we need to know what God has given us a hand to build. We need to know that there are times and there are seasons when actually it's better to be anointed to say nothing. I'll say it again. Sometimes and in those seasons, it's better to know that actually sometimes we're anointed to say nothing. But Israel, they learned the error of their ways. They came back to God. They positioned Samuel again as the prophet. And then there's this beautiful moment where God asks Samuel to anoint David to be king, right into his old age. And he goes out in 1 Samuel 16, 17, but the Lord said to Samuel, so he asks him to go and anoint King David to be king. And Jesse, the father of seven sons, passes these seven sons before Samuel, but none of them are the Lord's anointed. But the Lord said to Samuel, look not on his appearance or at the height of his stature, for I have rejected him. For the Lord sees not as man sees, for man looks on the outward appearance, but the Lord looks on the heart. And I want to say to you this morning that however small you may feel, However out in the backwater you might feel, however out on the outskirts you might feel, God, Clay's Community Church, is not going to miss you out. In fact, he has perfectly positioned you. And he will come and seek you out. Just as God positioned Samuel to go out in the backwater, out into Bethlehem, and anoint David to be king. David wasn't even in the lineup. Jesse brought all his seven sons out and left David tending sheep. David, the youngest, wasn't even considered to be invited to the place of where they were doing the sacrifice with the prophet Samuel. He wasn't even invited. But God said, he's not here. Samuel said, he's not here. The one that God's anointed, he's not here. Seven sons they had, all really tall. You can imagine them. They're probably all really dressed up, didn't they? Like sticking their shoulders out. Like, yeah, I'm going to be the one. I'm going to be the king. He's not here. And so Jesse had to go and search for him. And God does that with us. He searches us out. You might feel like you're a small church. You are not a small church. I break that off of you in Jesus' name. You might feel that you're a small person. I break that off of you in Jesus' name. You are called, you are destined to speak good news to people. If you feel like you're small, you'll be in good company, because they said that about Nazareth. John 1, 4, 6, Nathaniel answered him, Nazareth, can anything good come out of Nazareth? And Philip replied, come and see. What were they going to see? They were going to see Jesus. And how much fruit was there from Jesus' life? 
How much fruit was there from Jesus' life? How much fruit was there from Jesus' life? And there will be so much fruit in this place too. Because it says you will know them by their... Say that again. You will know them by their... Say it again. You will know them by their... Amen. You will know them by their fruit. You've got good fruit. I'm just going to invite someone up to play. I don't quite know who. I think it's Alan. Perfectly positioned, greatly prepared, wonderfully anointed. We're just going to take a moment to pray. the band plays I just want to pray for some specific things for you you might be here today and you might have loads of questions loads of questions you're in good company but what I would ask you to do is that you don't put those questions to the forefront I would ask that you take your time and just walk it out and allow Spirit of God and the breath of God to just come upon you and allow Him to answer those questions. If you are someone here today and you have been going through the motions, but yet God is saying to you today, I need you to come back. I need you to come back. I need you to be more filled, more on fire in your home, in your partnership, or in your workplace. Just pray with me now. If that is you, you can say this in your heart. You don't need to say it out loud. Dear Jesus, forgive me for going a different direction. Forgive me for trying to have all the answers. God, I want to commit my life to you. Jesus, I want to recommit my life to you. Forgive me for my sin. Forgive me from walking a different direction. Forgive me for going cold. And now I pray, Jesus, that you would fill me afresh with your fire. Fill me afresh with your Holy Spirit. All those questions that I have, God, I just lay before you. I give them to you. I put them into your hands. In Jesus' name.